Beloved poets, welcome to Open Minds, Open Mic, the place to be on a Friday night. <laughs> and tonight we have a delight. You know how it is. Friday night shenanigans here on Open Minds and a feature this time coming from one of our beloved members of our community. Oh, man, if you haven't gotten yourself a copy of In the Time of the Cloud, please do check it out on Amazon. Debbie Seagal is going to be rocking the house in a little bit with the feature. Do not miss. Um, I just want to take this time to thank everybody here for tuning in and joining us tonight or today, depending where you are in the world. We understand we got different time zones happening. So with that said, let's jump right into the action. On deck, we got Thomas Open Minds, but leading off tonight, and in one spot, please give it up for M.T. Pariti. Amuta, take it away when you are ready. What's up, y'all? I'm M.T. Pariti. I'm here on Long Island in New York. Um, I'm sure that Dre will post some stuff for me, maybe. For the scene, I run a poetry and art magazine. It's all about the open mic scene that's happening here right now from the bridges to the forks. So we actually cover Brooklyn, Queens, Nassau, and Suffolk. So definitely check us out at thescene.life. Um, and this is what we do. But uh, what got me into this... Oh, look, there's a calendar of open mics on the back. Holy crap. Um, but yeah... So uh, what got me into this is the poetry. So let me get right into that. Um, this is new, new shit or fresh paint, as Thomas likes to say. Love you. Um, I wrote this last week. I had to I had to put my cat, one of my cats down. Um, and so I've been doing a lot of pretending. Now, that's not what this poem is all about, but it's what started it. It's called Pretending. Asymptomatic panic takes grip. This shit is so tragic, can't grab it, it slip. Can't hold it together, bad habits unskip. Something must be severed, I heard that shit rip. I heard that shit tear, that life was unfair, that nobody knows and nobody cares, that nobody's coming despite all the stares, despite all the eyes, you won't feel the hands because everyone's looking for likes and for shares. Keep up with the Joneses, but nothing compares. When women choose bears, and rightfully so, some things tip the scales, we say we don't know, but it's people like me refusing to show what is going on deep down below. Who keep a facade, keep up with appearances, seeking a god, all we got was what fear insists. And fear insists action like fight, freeze, or flee, but there's a distraction from me feeling me can't seem to get traction, it's so slippery. This slope of abstraction is the only thing free. They call it free fall. Free fall for a reason. Because gravity don't cost a thing. The lies they enthrall, but bring about treason. Betrayal, it is the worst sting. A stab in the back, couldn't hack it, I quit. This shit is no cap, got a slap for a fit. The game couldn't match, so I set that love shit up for a catch. Get it fast, radar blip. Couldn't last past the storm that always blows itself out. Wouldn't ask for more norm, wouldn't take a reroute, wouldn't change my direction, wouldn't do something different. Emotional reflection on the page, how I did it. How I got through the day with distraction and play. Oh, the last one would say there is no other way to make the peace stay, despite not showing signs that anxiety has taken hold of my spine, taken hold of my nervous system. Don't miss them, they no longer serve us. They piss in on living. Don't give them a chance. Don't let them take hold. 
pretend that you're fine. It never gets old. Paul. And if I have time for one short one. Um, sweet, thank you. So that's pretending. And then this is called inspiration. And I wrote this yesterday. So I have to read it, sorry. <clears throat> in search of inspiration, just groping in the darkness, a simple conversation asking, how the hell do we start this? How the hell did we get here? And how the hell do we get out? Now we tell them about fear in whispers and in a loud shout. We tell them about the self-doubt we tell them about the pain, how you always felt so left out, a scapegoat getting the blame, not treated the same as your siblings, in fact, just considered a stain, your heart an abandoned building, where not even walls still remain. A roof and a frame is all that is left, proof you're insane and always bereft, not best, not blessed, no, not even good, Confess the rest and hide in a hood. Because knocking on wood hasn't kept me from harm. Let it be understood. I have lost all my charm. Like a man with one arm in a clapping contest. Someone sound the alarm. They're coming for conquest. They're coming to invade, take over your behavior. Intrusive thoughts that came disguised at your, as your own savior. So do me a favor and cut me some slack. As you can see, it's inspiration I lack. Paul. Everybody unmute and please give it up for M.T. Pariti at this time. Yeah. Wow. Hey, MT, I'm curious. Did you ever or do you occasionally write without rhymes? I do, but um, I, I can't get away from it. So I just allow it to happen. I There was a time where I was kind of bummed with my style. And then I learned to kind of accept it and appreciate it and try to craft it in a specific way. So now I just kind of have fun with it. Oh, I like what you just said. You just allow it to happen. It's just a natural thing. You didn't pick the rhyme life. The rhyme life picked you in a sense. <laughs> Everybody, one more time. MT. Hell yeah, brother. Yeah, we love you, brother. MT. We got another fucking dope ass rhymer happening next, though. <laughs> oh yeah, my god, we got ourselves a killer lineup, and it's just awesome to be part of this with y'all tonight. On deck, we got Paul Skiff, but step up to the plate in the two spot, please. Give it up for Thomas. Open minds, take it away when you are ready. So, MT, um, I said that you had to put your cat down. Um, like, a year, two years ago or so, I had to put my little baby boy down. It's a beautiful blue cat we call Ganja Blue. And since you read that, and in honor of, of your lost cat, um, I'm going to read the poem that uh, Ganja Blue actually helped me write. I was sitting next to where we buried him, next to the river, and I started writing this poem, and he he chimed in a bit on it. Uh, this is called Ganja Blue. Waters flow, rivers grow, push banks to outer brinks. Your soul shines, a shrine we lovingly crafted for you, my sweet baby blue. As long as the sun beams, I'll dream of you. Seems you left too soon, seen in every room. And every flower's bloom, every moment spent under the moon, sent to us from her, an angel disguised in fur, the size of your purr is insur, meountable. 
Your eyes were a mountain full, a gaze to be praised. It's safe to say you were a meowsing, arousing my curiosity when you played. The pure luminosity of your brain left a stain. It's never been the same. I think of you often, soft and strong. You will always be ganja, but you will never be gone. That was the first uh, piece there. And then uh, this one I wrote yesterday at Come As You Are. Uh, the prompt that I went with was the locked door. And it's still very rough. I got to work on it some, but I wanted to share this with y'all. You are walking down a dark street, lost. This must be a bad dream, are your first thoughts? The bright golden full orb of the moon broke into your eyes you try to find some shelter to hide from your mind walking slowly towards a seemingly abandoned mansion while forcing holy hordes to fragment your assortment of saddened imagination faced with a locked door you knock and wait Begin to contemplate this decision that you've made. The hair on the back of your neck tries to fly away. Unsure of the time and space you're currently residing in, you feel a strong pull to force this locked door open, hoping that what lies and waits is a better place than what you currently face. Urgency races, thrusting you to take action. You begin to hear an unlatching, a bit of laughing. As your bitter thoughts turn to see what's happening, the door unlocks and your spirit is grabbed and passes in. Your mind begins unraveling, a madness you are lost in. You feel a deep relief as you are tossed into your coffin. Okay, Thomas, get deep on us. Uh, you got one like more? Twist, it? Yeah, I got one more actually too. Inspiration reminded me. I hope I have it on here. So I wrote an inspiration poem that um, it, you read. It's a mirror poem, I guess. You read it down and then back up. And I didn't know what that was. I wrote it a long time ago when I was just a child, um, maybe 13. And since you read that and just wrote that, I figured I would... Um, share this with you and it's cool because the 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 first ending rhyme of it is come and it, it all has ending rhymes going down and then back up but the the difference in them and the way it morphs is pretty interesting i'm just trying to buy time right now because I'm, I'm finding it and then changing the font size on here because it is way too large okay there we go this is uh called inspiration dear watson there it goes, as quick as it had just come, leaking slowly out of deception, falling upwards in a parallel direction, jumping through a timeless mention, crawling past fact, running into fiction, shattered by gathering pieces in an instant. Look left, it's to your right, damn you missed it. That shit moves quick, it's getting too twisted, calm as can be, 42% ballistic, Dying down too quick. Calm as can be. 42% ballistic. That shit moves quick. It's getting too twisted. Look left. It's to your right. Damn, you missed it. Shattered by gathering pieces in an instant. Crawling past fact. Running into fiction. Jumping through a timeless mention. Falling upwards in a parallel direction. Leaking slowly out of deception. There it goes. As quick as it had just come. Inspiration, dear Watson. It's an old one. Everybody, please unmute and give it up for Thomas Open Minds at this time. Thomas, Thomas Open. Woo! Wow. Love it.
That was like a, a two-step rhythm, almost like a boxer's rhythm. Way to go into it, man. Yeah, that was from the, the mind of a 13-year-old uh, Thomas who was, you know, trying to find inspiration. I That's see cool. your, your genius found you even at that age. Yeah, really, really, thank you for sharing that. To have poetry from that far back, that's pretty cool. <laughs> One more time, give it up for Thomas Open Minds. All right, we're going to keep this show rolling. Yeah! <laughs> On deck, we got Lantern Carrier, but stepping up to the plate now at the three spot. Please give it up for Paul Skiff. Unmute and take it away when you are ready. All right, let me go uh, just get something up on the screen. <clears throat> I'll try to do two things. Uh, the first one is go something like this. Per descansando en paz con sueños cual traerte la persona tu eres en pureza. La persona tu eres en presa, enteramente en Dios, todo en ti. Oyendo a la voz en el universo cual es parte de ti, cuyas voces aquí ahora mismo con cara de nuestros entendimientos, nuestras entenda. Elementos dentro. De tuya, de tuya, de tuya, 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 dentro el par de tuya, cual no es, dentro el par de tuya, cual no es física, no es física. May you be resting in peace with dreams that bring you the person you are in purity. Alive, 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 Listening to voice of the universe that is part of you. Listening right now to the voice of the universe that is part of you. Whose voice is here right now with each of our understanding. In the part of you that is not 
physical, the part of you you used to touch my heart, the part of you that is not physical. I think that's all I'm going to do. Thanks. Such a joy. Uh, I'm, it is a delight for me to be here with all of you. In that case, at this time, please unmute, show your love for Paul Skiff. Ovation, ovation. Thank you. Yeah, amazing. Oh. Wow. Haunting. Hell yeah. I love going to the Skiffers, man. You get ah, it's just beautiful performance, man. I love it. I would hope for one day to see you live. Definitely. Oh yeah, ah, being in the room with that energy. You kidding me? Oh, I would love it. Ah, uh, you know, I was just saying the other day. Uh, it's coming up on one year since the New Eureka Poets Cafe has been closed in the city. Promised it would take two years to refurbish the place. So it's almost only one more year till they open the venue for okay. anybody. They're wants. meeting at the Bowery, though. They are yeah, meeting they, at the Bowery. Yeah. Yeah, and they do a live thing at an alternative thing up Avenue C, the Lois Sida Center, which is really cool, too. But, you know, nothing replicates the flavor of the place. Mm. Thanks, Thomas. I'm just going to throw this out there. I would love to one day just snatch you and bring you to the bookery and have you feature. Because um, I think... Uh, Manchester here could use a a nice trip into the skiff verse. <laughs> Any place in my eyes, but definitely Manchester. The Twilight Zone in this motherfucker. Anyway, enough of that. One more time, give it up for Paul Skiff. Yeah, Skiff. Thank you, Paul. Woo! Thank you, really. We love it. On deck, we got Nemo soon, but stepping onto the plate now. Please give it up for Lantern Carrier. Unmute and take it away when you are ready. Thank you, my brother. Greetings to everyone, and uh, <clears throat> especially happy to see D. Allen, which I haven't seen, whom I haven't seen for a very long time. So I'll dedicate this piece to D. Allen because it's Black History Month here in London. It's called Mama Africa. Blessed be the ones who understand the wonders of my motherland. Quintessentially rich in many assets, her soil runs rivers of oil, gold, and diamonds of Tanzanite, the hue of gleaming gems. Her profoundly mesmerizing landscapes and wildlife are a sought for signature of her magnificence. Her griot tells stories of her ancestral opulence, her greatness and contributions to man in this cradle of civilization. Her cute children playing and laughing, hopping around firesides of stone and wood, conversing with wild animals before the invaders came, affecting their gleeful spirit. Her vast heart nourishes the lushness of a flora and fauna, her magnificent waterfalls, ascending with the peerless grandeur of her mountains, the gracefulness, allure, and elegance of her people, the biodiversity of her majestic Nile River, perhaps Africa's greatest resource. Her co was always mystical, like her prophets, adventurous, like her many nomads, jovial, her women with cheeks and lips like sunshine, feet that always seemed to dance, hands clapping, even in the non-harvesting segments of a season. Strange clouds of avarice and greed arrive from foreign lands, decimating the sanctity of a continent, defiling the virtues of its people in centuries of exploitation, segregating the joyful spirit of Ubuntu with the wiles of divide and conquer. I can still hear the drums of my motherland beating, 
a sacred heart of fortitude and resilience entreating to the light, a bleeding soul cupping its hands in prayer, offering its numerous scars to the love which gave it birth freely. My thoughts turn to Kilimanjaro, a majestic and proud sentinel in the east, a peaceful giant gleaming with the light of heaven to the bewildering Gorongoro crater and magical Lake Maniara. I walk with rhinos, giraffes, and elephants in the, in the famous Serengeti National Park, become one with the breathtaking view of an amazing 1,000 bird species, lions, a stunning baobab trees, and spellbinding nature migration of wildebeest and unspoiled beauty described as new wonder of the world and the pinnacle of excellence non pareil. Traces of the past are still evident in certain museums, but the old colonial masters are long gone, and Arusha is a fast thriving city of the East African community. It wakes at dawn to the call of prayer, numerous ethnic voices that but one people, all speaking Kiswahili, singing like flamingos and starlings, the notes of Armani, of harmony. Not far from the famous Arusha monument, I converse with my Maasai Mara brothers. They eat nyama while we speak of the land and cattle, me eating ugali and kachumbari with my hands, listening to the rhythm of drums, the women a kaleidoscope of Maasai Shuka and Kitenge, dancing with energy and passion. In Uganda, Lake Nyabikari's blue glimmering and still waters, nourishing the rolling green hills, the hot springs surrounding its vista, and lush green foliage, its gray overhanging clouds. Oluma Rock and the Benin city walls in Nigeria are truly reverential. Mama Africa, they try to stifle your spirit, drawing your breath into a sea of blackness, but you rose higher even than, than Angelou, a piercing light shining on your bustling markets of Accra, Arusha, Nairobi, Harare, Johannesburg, Addis Ababa, and Lagos, to name a few. Your Rwandan streets shine as its fast-flowing economy, and I travel out of this bodily cage to pay respect to its immaculate pavements, its Hutus, Tutsis, and Mo, waltz into one single melody of harps singing the same song. The mysteries of your Sodoro hot springs and the holiness of Lali Bela enchants me as I visit Lucy in your museum, taking the aroma of delicious coffee, eating injera with my fingers, and chatting with your elite gold medal athletes on Mount Toto, taking nutritional basu for strength. Mama Africa, ripped of your innocence, faced with bigotry, inequity, and injustice, Love still lights up your inner suns and moons, conspiring to align your innate synergy so you continue to glisten anew. Let us pay tribute to your spirit of tolerance and love, proclaiming its continued victory over adversity, the sacrifice of your people, still striving to protect your assets from heinous shadows, your continued march to overcome division, your ceaseless worship and drive for excellence. Kosi Sikeleli Africa Malufa Kanisu Pondo Wayo Izwa Imitanda Zoye Tu Kosi Sikelela Tina Lusapoayo. London Carrier, thank you. Wow. Just another masterful performance from a master craftsman of the English language. Everybody, please give it up for Lantern Carrier at this thank time. You, thank, thank you, you, Lantern Carrier. Woo! Um, beautiful wow. Lantern Carrier. Uh, what a you. trip. I want to yeah. meet Lucy too. That's a privilege. <laughs> that was amazing work. You never cease to amaze me. And that piece right there was just so beautiful and, and well put together. Like Lantern, I, I just I love you, brother. 
Thank you, my brothers, sisters, everyone. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you for doing what you do, Lantern, and just, again, showing us the life of your work. Wow. It's been a great show so far, and we've got so much show to go. It's ridiculous. Um, with that said, we're going to keep this rolling. Um, we're going to check in with uh, with Pinky Chu um, after Nemo Sum. But with that said, everybody at this time, please give it up for Nemo Sum. Unmute and take it away when you are ready. Thank you, Dre. Uh, thank you, everyone. Um, beautiful evening. I have a sequence of micro poems. There's seven of them. Um, I'll let the poems talk for themselves. Out of the hiss and crack of the dumpster fire of my mind, I rise. The garbage phoenix, resplendent. Why do you stretch your broken wings to the red sky? Ain't you shamed? I come downstairs to find my bad brain drinking coffee and reading the funny pages. The room smells of stacks of disappointment and the pungent dregs of shame. He shifts in his chair as I step over and around the boxes and the laundry he's strewn in my way. Although he moves his face closer to the pages, I can sense his attention pulling on my shoulder blades as I try to shrug it into place. I know he's feeling for his chance to slide up behind me so he can slip his frigid fingers around my heart and underneath my balls, gripping not like a lover, not like a practitioner, no, as the possessor who keeps and does not share. He wants us to be alone with our pain. We dance each morning like two old lovers vying to leave as he tries to convince me to stay in and shut the curtains and find a screen, and I fight my way to the door. I cannot help but smile when I hear him scream as I drag him out into the light of the possibility of love. Every mistake, an ember glowing, red on red, heat building until, behold, the garbage phoenix rises. Every failure of feather spread across the sky like the sunset when there's a storm coming. I drove to the farthest reaches of the city of my mind, past the snarl of traffic, the incessant honking of horns, the bright lights and smoke and fumes. I stood on the very edge of the great disk and I peered over. I was supposed to be the second coming of my father, a scholar or a ditch digger, he would say, but I never could sit still long enough to become learned. So when I was handed a shovel, I didn't ask questions. I dug until my sweat became flames that burned flesh from bone, until my heart was charred and all that I had been was consumed but embers left glowing return. Ashes become feathers, feathers become flames, and the phoenix flies free. My heart is held together with plaster tape and wire, bound by little bits of hope. If you listen closely, you can still hear it beating. Flames shine on metal as broken wings unfold. Bombs bursting above, the garbage phoenix seeks the sky. Thank you. Wow. Everybody unmute and please show Nemo. your love for <laughs> Nemo. So good to see you. Yeah. yeah. The, that, Woo! Those pieces Nemo. What you do Power. and the way you do it. The garb, I mean, how you could take a classic like that and and then <sighs> spin it into your own voice and then go that deep and pull it out that far. I don't know anybody else that could do that. Yeah, you're a gift to us. Thank you. That was one of my favorite performances from you. Yeah, man, that was 
amazing. Wow. That was one of the grittiest um, pieces I've heard from you. And I always liked you to be, I always like fancy you to be like that gritty poet. But damn, dude, you just took it to another level with that. Um, till my sweat became flames. Like that, that's going to like stick with me. That, I felt that. Um, and with that said, one more time. Please give it up for Nemo Stone. Holy shit, dude. Thank you for doing oh, what you do. Bro, bro. Oh, we should feature him. Actually, I believe we are. 2025, a refeat of Nemo is in the works, so stay tuned oh, for that. Oh, awesome. One. Yeah, please get me into the loop of that, because I am interested in finding out about that. Um, And for everyone to find out, too. Cause hell yeah, we would love to hear more Nemo if we can. With that said, we're gonna keep this shindig rolling. Um, we got uh, so we got two poets left before we uh, go into our feature tonight. So with that said, let's get into it. On deck, we got Karen Melander Magoon. But stepping up to the plate now, please give it up for Pinky Chew. Hey, that rhymed. I'm gonna take it away when you are ready. Before I start, thank you. Uh, can you all hear me? I, I want to check my audio again. <laughs> the problem with the audio I was so panicking. <laughs> I almost got to give up. I was like, I, I, I told my lobby, I'm just going to give up on this because I can't do it <laughs> without my audio. So, um, sorry about that, my cat. <laughs> Backing track, my cat. Um, so happy to see you all today. How are you guys doing? Oh, great. Yeah, so um, I'm going to do two things today. Um, I just made a short little um, poem um, for my lovey. So because he inspired me so much. So he was playing this solo guitar yesterday. He played Hey Joe, and it was so, so good. You guys got, you guys got to see it. And so... <laughs> uh force him to play later but then uh so i felt so inspired um he was so amazing so i wrote this little piece for him i'm gonna read it for my first one so oh i said wanna know how i feel whenever i see your fingers dance my blood rushes in hypnotic trance of romance so dense with fascination, attraction, and admiration towards your sexiness and smartness. It just blows my mind. I cannot describe it more vividly how it, it, how it intensely makes my heart beat crazily. I love the melodies they make. They stimulate me, arousing my hormones to just want to do to you. To screw your mind too. It's just you. No one else can make me feel so true. Yeah, because it's you. It's one of plenty of why I chose you. <laughs> it's short. It's just, it was like a five minute thing that I made for him. And uh, he smiled at that. <laughs> and my next one is. Uh, the thing that I did. You remember the Skull of Destruction? So today I'm going to sing it out. Uh, do you want me to... Okay. Uh, should I repeat from the beginning? All right. So Tony is... Uh, Mayva is trying to set up his... Uh, yeah, I was wondering where right he now. went. I'm like, did he hear mm -hmm. you? I'm like, what? He had to reboot there his computer. Oh. Yeah. Okay, he just joined so, in now. Yeah, sure. I guess I just have to do it myself. <laughs> no, no, he's here now. He just joined in. Oh, he's here? Yep, he's back. I hope his guitar is back. So. Hey, maybe. I, is love you, is working? it working? No, not yet. Not yet? <clears throat> so should I... I mean, we could we could wait a moment if it uh, maybe how long do you think it's gonna get for you to be able to do the backtrack? 
I, I don't know yet. I'm trying to figure it out. Oh, okay. All right. So yeah, I guess just do it now, and then when he close out the show, you can we can do you can do another piece of it too. <laughs> oh, okay. Um. All right. So I'm just gonna sing it out then, because I I probably uh, most of you have heard the uh the poetry, the complete poetry, the Skull of Destruction. So now I'm just gonna sing it. Oh man, I'm an idiot. I got it working. What? You got it working? Ah, oh, bet. Cool. So this is gonna be um a mixed, okay, a mixed of him playing the backtrack for my poetry. And after that, in the third chorus, I'm gonna start my own backtrack on the the original song. Okay. But I have, for that I need to be able to share the audio. Is it I was able to enable share settings, so I believe that should work. I might have to make her a uh, co-host. Done and done. Should not do this right now. Hey, you should be good now. I'm gonna wait until he starts. Uh, I need to know uh, where am I coming in at? Can you hear me? I think he wants to know where he's coming at you. Yeah. Where am Where am I going to? Ravi, you're good. Pinky, you need to unmute. Oh, sorry. Where where am I playing to? Oh, a scarlet of destruction. No, where where I'm you said I'm stopping at some point. I was stopping at the the third verse, sorry. After the chorus. In the mirror's reflection? Uh in the moonlit glow. That's where you, you gotta stop right there. The first verse. Yeah, before that, there's a course, right? So you got to stop after. Oh, okay. all right. I cannot hear your guitar, Levy. Huh? You can oh, check. You can't hear your guitar. Your original sound is on? You got to turn your original sound on. Sorry, I'm out of it. <laughs> Can you make the guitar louder a little bit? Yeah, one sec. I forgot that thing. I'll shoot that way. Okay. To find her inner calm, but her peace, a mere qualm. Continue, love. 
It's still the se second verse. <laughs> Sound? No. I didn't. Oh, no, we didn't hear your backtrack. And I'm only well, hearing you in one yeah. year, too. All yeah, right, you're so in uh, stereo. stereo. Yeah, stereo. Okay, let me just. You gotta switch to mono. Switch to mono? <laughs> yeah, you're in one ear. <laughs> okay, yeah, Double I click did. Okay. the uh, direct sound mm. button. There. Oh, yeah, I did. Can you, can you hear it now? And, yeah, but no, no, your, your audio is only, your voice is only coming out the left side. Yeah. Turn Here stereo I'm off in your, audio. um, your zoom. It's, it's in, it's in, it's in mono. It's so what's your, going on? It's from your interface. My interface. Hey, hello, hello, can you hear both? Well, we hear you, but you're in one ear. Yeah, I don't know how to how to fix that thing. You gotta double click your. your I thought it was kind of cool. It was like she was whispering into your left ear. I thought it was kind of. Cool. <laughs> I did click a mono. Hold on. Can you hear me now? Both. No, just the one. It's the oh okay so maybe it's this thing over here. It's the this thing. Oh yeah. How about now? Can mm. you hear me both? No. No, still no. In your Zoom, <laughs> on your audio settings, what does it say down there? Um, hold on, let me scroll through. This audio setting, it says original sound. Below that. It's um. Uncheck stereo if it's on there. It's not on. Try clicking it on. Try clicking on the stereo. Mm -hmm. There's a one plus two analog thing. Oh, there it is. Oh, How about there you now? Go. Yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah, now we can. <laughs> oh, God. All right. I am so sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> How do I only just share the sound? 
you uh, click on the share screen button and then um, ah. go to advanced, yeah. click on sound. All right. I got it now. All right, now you guys can hear me. You need to come up louder with your mic. Louder to my louder? Okay. Turn your mic up. Is that now? How about that? Higher. A little higher. Higher? 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 How about that? Oh. Is it, is it higher? Let's give her the space. Let's lend her our ears. Let's break down the stigma, let go of the fears. For she's not alone in this struggle, not by far. Let's stand by her side forever. So here's to the woman with emotions ablaze, navigating the storm in these menstrual days. She's strong, she's resilient, she'll rise above. With love and support, she'll conquer and she'll give love. Thank you. Thank you for all of your patience.
Everybody, please, at this time, please give it up for Pinky Chua. Yeah, Pinky Chua. Yeah, uh, no, you, you, you got through it all. It was brilliant. Yeah, thank you. I love that Next. Uh, piece, too. That was great. Too. And, uh, yeah, and so... All that, all that work is leading, to, leading up to... Uh, December when you guys turn on that new thing there. That's gonna be great. This is good. Yeah, good art. This, good good practice the, for that. Yeah, this is the uh the kind of sneak peek that we're all gonna do all together. Me and you, we all. So we're gonna do all th this thing, this kind of new thing, you know, where we can, you know, have a backtrack and also sing and yeah. Poetry is gonna be on a new um era. <laughs> Yay. We'll just have to make sure that things are all set before we um, we go live next time. Um, normally, we wouldn't have someone, you know, do a song all over again, but we understand that there were some tech issues. But um, this is just a reminder for everyone. <laughs> um, but legit, I we appreciate what you do. And with that said, stay tuned for what is um, in store with uh, poetry and music. Again, stay tuned. This is going to be fun. One more time, give it up for Pinky Chew. Pinky Chew, All right. musical collaboration. Yeah. With that said, we got one more poet going up before our feature tonight. Let's not mess around at this time. Please give it up for Karen Melander Magoon. Unmute and take it away when you are ready. Thank you so much, Pinky. That was just so true and so beautiful. I love everything that was going on in the background. Just you're amazing. So thank you so much. It was, oh, oh it was definitely worth the time. And um, it's just beautiful. Um, I want to do a tribute to Ebert Williams um, because he was born this month in October, actually quite a long time ago, 1908, but still. Um, he was the first known member of the National Association of the Advancement of Colored People, NAACP, to be murdered for his civil rights activities, basically for registering to vote. Williams was, he was born October 15, 1908, in rural Haywood County, Tennessee. He was the son of farmer Albert Williams and his wife, Mary Green Williams. He was killed in Brownsville, June 20th, 1940. So here is his, a little bit of his life. Born 1908 in October to Mary and Albert in Tennessee, a family that farmed the land. Albert and his wife, Annie, tried farming, but left for Brownsville, the country seat, to start a laundry, to vote as citizens and join the NAACP. Black people did not vote with impunity. Elisha Davis and four other African Americans from the NAACP tried to register to vote on May 6, 1940, but were harassed. Davis was forced to name names. He left town. Williams stayed. Williams stayed to die. A man called Ed Lee, a Coca-Cola man, saw that Williams was jailed for no reason but the crime of registering to vote on May 6, 1940. June 17th, he was imprisoned, and on the third day he was released and later found floating in the river, head down, two bullet holes in his chest. No one was convicted of the murder of Albert Williams. No one. The grand jury said, Foul violence, perpetrators, unknown, unknown. And though he had a wife and was beloved by many in Brownsville, as the owner of a laundry and a member of the NAACP and Taylor Chapel Methodist Church, a leader of a community where Blacks were forbidden to meet together, except perhaps for church. He was quickly buried in an unmarked grave, never to rise again, until cries of injustice became loud enough to be heard all the way from Tennessee to California and beyond. 
until cries of injustice screamed, enough, enough silence, enough murder, enough blood, enough hatred, until cries against injustice screamed the name of Albert Williams, martyr for black emancipation, the right to vote, to meet together, martyr for the emancipation of civilization, the right of all peoples to be free and each to have a voice, martyr for the emancipation of our collective soul. And in recognition of, I thought that was beautiful that I didn't realize that in Britain, this is the month to honor Africa. The month in the US is February usually. And I always write something in February. I try to keep studying all around Africa, which is such a huge and challenging country to try to understand. This is called Legacy of Africa. And I wrote it some time ago. Camel caravans still plod the desert of humanity's first centers of learning and civilization. Through the heart-wrenching twilight hours, they walk against the sun. They walk across the Aksumite Empire, breathing in the dust and gold, bearing the scrolls and art of ancient libraries. Ethiopia, Eritrea, Djibouti, Djibouti, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Somalia, South Sudan, Sudan, Yemen. Names we know today, once part of a great empire, nurturing the first blossoms of civilization. Names we know today birth the fertile intelligence that spread across the globe, birthing the Aztec, the Maya, the Greek and Roman great human minds and thought and art, emerging from over 10,000 years of farming, emerging and evolving language, dance, ideas, their empire becoming one with China, Persia, Rome, feeding the world new thoughts, their camels connecting the land to the sea, their stele still stand, the obelisk of Aksum and the chapel of the Ark of the Covenant still visited in Ethiopia, while from Mauritania, Senegal, Mali, Camels brought their wares and priceless thoughts to the Mediterranean, along with gold from the kingdom of Ghana. Camels from the Wagadu kingdom connected all of the Sahel, while Kumbi managed a huge population with limited water through engineering, trading their cola nuts, origin of Coca-Cola. Before the Mali civilization subsumed the Kumbi, Gambi, Guinea, Guinea-Bissau, Ivory Coast, Mali, Mauritania, all the Mali empire mined half the gold of Africa. Its emperor, Mansa Musa, perhaps the wealthiest man the world has ever known, spreading trade routes through Africa, spreading until inevitable conflict tore away at his empire. Sangai controlled the water waterways of the Niger. Soon the new empire, building on reservoirs of intellect, influenced by wandering tribes of Tuareg natives, built the great library of Timbuktu, becoming the academic center of Africa, extending into Spain and Turkey via Morocco, the blossoming of Islam, with the animus cultures of Africa, encouraged acceptance of all cultures and religions under the embrace of Islam. Epitomized layer in, later in Ronda, Spain, center of religious diversity. Yet the Songhai Empire was threatened by a eunuch from Morocco, whose Sultan wanted a great empire. Nearly achieving it at the Battle of Tondibi, which crushed the Songhai Empire. 
by outnumbering Moroccans with the arquebus, the original shoulder powdered weapon. Still the nomadic Tuareg remain with their stories and their love of the desert, their stone huts and exquisite ornaments and dress and their noble white camels, the salt mines they controlled, they with other nations formed the kingdom of great Zimbabwe, only gradually crumbling to colonial invasions from the West, encroaching on civil conflicts and unrest, exploiting the evolution of African slavery and the disintegration of kingdoms to erode the great civilizations of Africa, the center of the world, never to be forgotten, never to be erased from human endeavor, today, tomorrow, and forever. Thank you. Everybody, please unmute and give it up for Karen Melander yeah. Magoon at Beautiful, this time. Beautiful, Karen. Nice work. Great pieces between that and Lantern, like we got like a all, like a pretty complete uh, historical yeah. reference of Africa and the different phases to that. That was amazing work. Thank you for doing all that work too. Yeah. Thank you, thank you for doing what you do and for taking the time to come here and spend part of your day here on the on Open Minds Open Mic. We got another got some people coming in already. In time for the feature, which is coming up. With that said, it's my distinct honor and privilege to be bringing forth this at this time a poet of um, not just of our community, but of one of the revered uh, beat generation, um, a generation of creatives hey. who decided to just push boundaries a bit and to be able to express themselves in a way that at the time wasn't really seen, which led forth to the uh, explosion of, you know, just boundary pushing that we see in the right end we see today, definitely. And um, definitely one of the, um, one of my favorite poets in this community, <laughs> not to have like any favoritism, but you got to check out in a time of the cloud and also follow Debbie on Amazon for she has a selection of poetry for you to uh, purchase. And with that said, at this time, it is my honor and privilege to bring forth to you tonight's feature in the form of one Debbie Seagal. Unmute and take it away when you are ready. Thank you. Without further ado, I'm just going to get into some unpublished pieces, and then I'm going to do some published ones. Anyone wishing to dispute this would soon be at a loss for arguments. When mind tethered to body tried to possess everything by labeling it, to realize it is you who gave it meaning. Strange in the dusky light, a branch of honeysuckle, Chimeras make up a fraction of monster sightings, just ahead of the zombies. The appointed day arrived. They asked if it was their karma, if in the search for dogma, humans crafted an archaic morality. Seen from this standpoint, the individual human is diminishing in importance. These are the signs of the presence of a spirit he, an initiate in these inquiries, explained. Are you real? We asked. Error message, not programmed to respond to this question. And danger to herself. October 2009, Obama is president. Such hope. Fifth year of marriage. Two middle-aged eccentric potheads playing house in California. He's Dutch, carrying baggage from World War II. And the husband is at it again, waking her up at 5 a.m. yelling, I'm angry. They betrayed me. I want to kill them. I'm not those people. Let me sleep. Something snaps. The wife is running, bouncing off walls like a pinball. I can't take it. I don't want to live. He tackles her. 
curled like a bug on the ground under him, her knees bent, crushed by his swimmer's arms and chest. She flails and kicks. He hollers, my ribs. He lets go, groaning. The husband and wife step outside. He lights two cigarettes, hands her one. Deep inhalation, remembering to breathe. No one around. Neighbors don't get involved. He yelled so loud, though. The cops roll up. Uniformed with badges, cuffs, and clubs, they climb out of the car and confront the wife. We got a call. We heard you're assaulting him. A cop follows the husband, hand near his gun to see some ID. Worried about deportation, the husband grumbles. I stopped her. She was freaking out. It's all a mistake. She'll be fine. Soon getting ready for her shift. Business as usual. A cop is saying to the wife, we can take you to jail or to the psychiatric hospital. Your choice. Come with us or go with the medics. They're on the way. Mr. Rogers said, look for the helpers. The wife chooses the ambulance. It's quiet. She feels safe on the gurney. I want this peaceful, easy feeling to go on and on. And who the hell called the police? And this one is called, oh, by the way, post beat, post beat. I'd have to be 92 years old to be a beat poet. And incidentally, I did just lose my 92 year old mother last month and, um, so it's nice to be here spitting words. She was a, a very um, big encourager and enthusiast of my writing. And my sister Miriam is in the room. So, And this is called May the Stay There Be As Fun As The Way There. Circle of life is a ring of bells. Wizards draw algorithms from empty wells. To the yellowing, the reddening, the whitening and blackening, to earth, air, water, and lightning. Baggage in rack, window a crack, hardened bachelor tracks, back seat of the coach. Reason to approach, all you got is a roach, and she's a spinster, mister, a stranger, a sister. In the midst of a stunt, twisting, she looks back, she smiles at a stud, whilst rolling a blunt of dank purple bud. And cheap shag tobacco in a white zigzag jumbo. Under this hazy dream, cotton-clad clouds, thick triple cream, absent mad crowds. Murder of crows above vines of old rose. Spread wide and leap, orders Alpha Crow. Kind sorcerer chants, as above, so below. Spinster stranger sister remains in light till the foreman of her job lets her jump on the night coach to the coast and raise a midnight toast with silver goblets. To the gold, the red, the white and black waters, to grabbing the ring in the nose of Nirvana, to the passage of this ride, here's to the drama. Life is a ring, is a song of bells, is a wellspring of ritual to wrong human spells. And I'll just keep on going. These are some of uh, my published uh, work. I have uh, put my link, my, my author ordering page, if you would like to purchase one of my publications. They are very affordable, and you will enjoy them. This is out of In the Time of the Cloud. Time's Arrow. I get tired of people saying, let things take their course. Things trend toward entropy, energy dispersing, dissolving, and devolving. Somewhere, someone is making a mistake. Furniture is getting dusty. Relationships are ending. Observing a steam engine chugging and you wonder, where does heat go? Energy of the universe is constant, and entropy tends to a maximum. Such each passing moment brings changes. Sequences completed, things getting done and once done, never getting undone. 
Imagine stirring a spoon of jam into oatmeal and making raspberry trails. Imagine stirring the spoon backwards. Trails don't reinstate as a blob again. Entropy is the difference between what happened and what is to be. Time moves forward and binds us to echoes. Each moment is a fading flash of future. The past is forevermore generating the now, uncertain and boundless into more into mortality. And I think I'm gonna just switch up the order. And since that poem was uh, related to entropy, I'm just gonna go right into my novella, which is uh, got the word entropy in the title and it relates to entropy. It's actually about sex, drugs, deadheads, juggalos, mystical gurus, anarchy and consent. Edwin in the Embrace of Entropy. Uh, yeah, I just, I'm gonna segue right into a excerpt of this. And since this uh, was advertised as a wholesome reading, that was false advertising, you shall see. Okay. Um, there's parts of this that are kind of epistolary, which is fancy word for like some of these are letters that the uh, characters write. So I'm just gonna dive right into a letter that's going to lead into scenes that are not letters. <clears throat> Dear Dell. Edwin's taken acid daily for weeks. He diagnosed himself with hallucination perception persisting disorder and says pain pills might help. He can't find any at People's Park, but he's been scoring H. He brought some home and I tried it. Only once. You can get hooked so easily on it. We chased the dragon by inhaling smoke off a piece of foil. Then he injected H into his butt. He thought it would be safer than a vein. He ran a 105 fever and got a gnarly boil on his butt. I took him to the ER. Guess what? There's a reason to wipe with alcohol first. Like with any shot, he didn't. And he caught blood poisoning. I told him to get his shit together. I am so done. Put a fork in me. If you don't hear from me, then send a search party. For now, send vibes of fortitude. Yours truly, Barb, the bad influence. Barb returns home to find Edwin in her favorite overstuffed chair, nodding off smoking an American spirit that hasn't burned his fingers yet. A smoke alarm bleep, bleep, bleeps, and he doesn't move. The cushion is on fire. Barb grabs him and they fall to the floor in a heap. She bolts and shoves the burning cushion out the front door, launching it down the front stoop while picking up the hose and spraying. She dashes back inside, wondering if he has overdosed. She picks up a glass of water and pours it on his head, and he comes around sputtering. What the hell? I can't be around you, you junkie. You were chasing the dragon, Barbara. Kettle calling the pot black? Go wreck your own life, not mine. Get out, now. My blotter sheets. The acid deal he's been wheeling for too long now is his first priority. I can't let Barb mess that up. I need to get the bag. He stumbles through the house, slamming every door. He clobbers the ceramic figurines Barb's kid made, and they land broken on the kitchen tile floor. Across the street from Malcolm X Elementary School is Cabbage Castle Collective in a three-story renovated barn. A dozen activists are housed in private six by nine lofts on the third floor and in a converted school bus. On the ground floor is an industrial kitchen where meals, not missiles, activists prepare vegan grub for the free feeds. Above the kitchen is a ballroom used for meetings, shows, and classes. Edwin has gotten in good with some people in the collective, and he's been stashing the blotter acid in the walk-in fridge. He goes to retrieve it and is asked to unload supplies from the Meals Not Missiles pickup truck today at People's Park. Good deeds make good karma. He'll do it, stay for 10 minutes, and jet across the bay to unload the acid. He has some heavy lifting to do, so he sets the messenger bag down by ruckus, sitting cross-legged against a mature redwood tree. Watch my gear fan, Edwin pleads. 
As Edwin unloads boxes and bushels from the pickup truck, he glances back at Ruckus, who gives a thumbs up. Ruckus sees Ringo Bones set down a very similar messenger bag against a neighboring redwood tree. Ringo strolls to the spacious brick and mortar municipal bathrooms and admires them joyously. Ruckus stares at Ringo and then spaces out. Ringo speaks into a small tape recorder. A society that provides no public toilets is doomed to shit-strewn walkways. He smiles to himself about the collection of subversive essays he is working on. Ruckus, after seeing everyone has been served, rises from his repose, then returns to the Redwood with his repast. This Redwood, right? Here's the bag I'm guarding for that kid. He plunks himself down. Edwin, who got a little sidetracked, glances over into his great relief, sees Ruckus chowing down by a messenger bag. He strides over and collects it. As he thanks Ruckus, he wonders why the strap feels extra tight as he slings it over his shoulder. Edwin loathes the idea of taking public transit to San Francisco while holding. Schedule one drug, come on. What kind of world imprisons those in possession of substances which when ingested lead to perceptions of beauty and truth? Fuck sobriety, fuck society, fuck rules. Kalima's van is parked across the street. I need to make up with her. I have no other choice. Edwin opens his candy tin and pops a benzo. He clears his throat. <clears throat> Sexy lady. He practices until it sounds natural. His heart fights with his amygdala. He coaches himself. Choose love, not fear. He moseys over to the passenger side of the van with Marilyn Monroe a la Warhol window curtains and windshield draped in a splendid Ganesha tapestry. Ganesha is Kalima's favorite Hindu deity and Marilyn Monroe is her favorite tragic blonde bombshell. Whoop, whoop, he hoots tentatively and climbs in. Kalima is lying in the back on black satin cushions barely wearing a black lacy bra and thong. Her pink hair is adorned with a matching black ribbon with nitrous oxide whippets and red rubber balloons tied up in the bow. She's playing with a pink animal print vibrator. Sexy lady, he blurts, sounding exactly like Psy, the rapper on that ridiculous music video, Gangnam Style. And I'm gonna leave it at that and I hope you enjoyed that excerpt of completely non-wholesome material. And I'm gonna go back to the poetry chat book. Um, I'll, I'll put links to these items and you maybe you could check them out. Okay, back to the chat book for some poetry. And the chains aren't real. The ancient seer swoons as soon as she pulls forth the Eight of Swords. With a deadpan countenance, she leans in. You are enslaved in stationary space, confined at glacial pace with no escape. As she lights a camel straight, she cloaks herself in a black satin cape. She pulls the devil and cracks a smile. The bondage is revealed. It is you who prevents you from your own true will. The chains aren't even real. She pulls the fool and to your query replies, shut your eyes, give in, let go. Just leap, don't look, walk the skies. The devil knows your wings will grow. Instead of tumbling, you shall fly. What a surprise. And <clears throat> the unknown poet. Light up crossroads where a poet mines fool's gold. No stranger to danger, minstrel wearing paint, strumming strings for a martyred saint. Dreamy believer is getting vexed, pushes moonlight aside with two hands clasped, 
begs grace for favor and prays to a stranger. Poet refused and is still unknown, though ardent kisses to the moon are blown. And Amor Fati. Two passengers cruising to the end of the line. Fate, you mean the world. To you, direct gratitude. Changing an attitude, smile, throwing wishes in the wind, uncovering gifts this creation is. Ocean, city, forest, dancing, music, honey, babies, multiplied by vibration, all in this together, always in connection and nothing is not part of it. What does a passenger do when arriving at the terminal? Praise fate for life and for a passenger beside me. Ode to a Dark Cavalier. Oh, cherished, chaste lover, impatient with each quirk, I wait here in the sepia hedge with a bevy of vexed phantoms, seeking eternity on screens, avatars in various simulacrums, ease into amnesia of a real world where I heard there still exists a sun. Rising from pale eras, sundering to shadow, tasting zeitgeists from all mouths to my ears, crouching under waterfalls of twilight, plunging over crevices, snatch elegant youth, bearing time to tomb. In dreams, a somber night recites dark poetry. I couldn't get enough, so I grasped and gashed you. Oh, secret poet, you bleed on the page, a language I, who tap and scratch the wall, will never read. Dragooning the scarce cavalier's salty steed, I beg you to stay until the apathetic world goes away. And this is one that's a not particularly chaste poem. Threshold Cuckold. It was a rowdy pub in the woods near a beach with glassy sand. Room, staggering distance, searching for shrooms, making do with an analog chemical, dancing at the dive, flirting with the singer, we face planted through the threshold at closing time. It was a love drug. Bicycle day for Albert Hoffman. You, you notice the theme is like not very wholesome. So anyway, he rode home on his bike. First documented acid trip, golden key in his hand, unlocked visibility goggles. Albert Hoffman glimpsed uninterrupted stream, fantastic pictures, extraordinary shapes, kaleidoscopic play of colors. His problem child had been set aside five years. Imagine a colorless potion rippling and swirling in a beaker. Premier psychedelic mythology by mistake. Legendary demigod, scientist tripping in the Alps, riding home from his lab after unplanned ingestion of medicine for the soul. Michael Pollan reported results of his experiment with the molecule, detailing its attributes as a biological control alt delete, which occasionally causes psychotic behavior in people who have not taken it warned the outlaw oracle, Dr. Timothy Leary. Um, speaking in a new way after Tongo Eisenmartin. Tongo used to be our San Francisco poet laureate up until pretty recently. Actual poet laureate, not beat poet laureate. Okay, speaking in a new way after Tongo. Working spells, enchanting mantras, incantations, composing words on bus station glass. Maybe this line will stick, poking lines under skin, calling all blood. 
visualizing demons. Is it you? Is it me? All you see is a bus empty of angels and devils, engineering images of mortals, worrying about sides, forgetting the top was falling on a day now known as Flat Earth Day. Jokes were cracked. You wouldn't understand, had to be there, had to bury the way to the front of the bus beneath the joke. And another shot poured, hit the floor, sit up straight. Was it a year of the rat in 2008? Second day of the work week, cooking a nasty stew or a runaway funhouse mirror or a din in the ash can. Merchants burning down the malls, teachers running down the halls, Spray painting artists tag the walls. Comrade, can I get a light off your smoke? Inside this chest is a heart-shaped sculpture, an anchored star. Interpreting the face in this mirror, finding an amnesia that includes this house. Forgetting, shackles pierce this all-knowing third eye. Lines stuck under skin, images of mortal beings. I wasn't there then, but I'm here now. Tell me about it. Maybe this will stick. Comrade, can I get a light off your smoke? And I'm going to do one more out of the book, and then I think one more that I didn't set up. Please to do, to do, to do. Ah, how unprofessional of me. Ah, oh, don't fire me. Don't fire me. Yeah, there it is. So this one is a very special um, poem to the hearts of those of us here because it's my collab with our um, beloved departed uh, Gustav. And it's also something you'll find in, in the time of the cloud. I reworked it a teensy bit and kind of made it my own, but it's our collab. And what's really awful is like, do the things you wanna do and don't put them off. Gustav had wanted to um, perform the collab with me again. And I was like, oh man, I'm going to the DMV like that day. So I won't be able to. So let's catch up with each other the following week after that. Oh my goodness. So I'm getting goosebumps just thinking of it. Um, but yeah, nobody's promised a next week. Icarus hallucinates. What is time but a construct? Keep rhyme on moon clocks, tongues forming words of magic. When a thought dies unspoken, it's tragic. Feel the heartbeat in my words. Watch them fly away like birds. That soar above the pain and sadness. Near the sun like Icarus madness. To feel the burning light he soared. Not all problems are solved by a sword. By the beating wings, an angel is heard. In the twilight, all the lines get blurred. Remember what I tell you, dear ones. Twisted darkness under fierce suns. Nothing artificial about our intelligence. No pandering to the lowest common audience. While chat GPT hallucinates. Remember, time for no one waits. Time and space can set you free. Lord, what fools these mortals be? That's how it seems to me, old friend. Everything that begins comes to an end. Everything that begins comes to an end. Everything that begins comes to an end. That would have been a great place to end, but I'm going to do one more. This will just kind of put the cherry on the top of the cake, I hope. It's another unpublished piece of poetry. Hi, Frog. Thanks for coming. Okay. All by myself, I survey the territory. Thanks for hanging in there, folks who are hanging in there with me. All by myself, I survey the territory. Who can I show up for and show compassion towards when the person who needs compassion seems to be me? I have been self-disparaging now for so long, putting myself down, 
thinking I'm always wrong. As the master teaches, I am also a precious jewel. The only me in the universe, perfectly meing. So I can show up and show compassion to me. That looks like being kind and not critical to myself. To see my imperfections as part of being human and to feel connected to the other humans, not isolated due to my flaws. To hold thoughts and feelings even when they hurt, not to push them away. To treat myself with warmth in hard times to protect myself against rumination, to confront my own inadequacies and difficult situations, framing them as a part of life we all go through, to give support to myself as if I were my own best friend during hardship, to accept pain and loss as part of the human condition, to engage in self-appraisal with kindness, and honor my humanness, to value my pursuit of happiness and my aversion towards suffering and behave accordingly, to be an internal empathizer, exploring my own experience with curiosity, to be in a gentle relationship, allowing all parts of my being to forgive myself. I am also a shining star, the only me in the whole universe, precisely, perfectly me-ing. And I can show compassion towards myself as I survey the territory all by myself. Dharma cannot be reduced to a self-help technique because Dharma cannot be reduced. When someone seeks the Dharma, they will not seek it in a self-help technique. Who am I to judge the path of another? I am just me, another nobody. The only me there is, perfectly, precisely, meing. Thank you. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for being who you are. I love you all for real. Mm -hmm. Everybody, please, at this time, give it up for the Debbie Seagull. Wow. Yeah. Debbie. Oh, Debbie. Oh, Debbie. Wow. Amazing. Oh, that was so good. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. You're so, you're so right, one of my favorite people and poets. You yeah. really are. I love your work. It's so, you know, it's, 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 it's so beyond entertainment and performance and genuine that it just... It's just it's valuable. It's valuable work, you know. I, I believe in, uh, in 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 living your life and leaving a body of work, you know, in in the leave of it all and and whatever you do, I feel like you're always building that uh, timeless voice, you know. It oh, just without, is, without trying. It doesn't get any better than this. Getting to feature and then getting to hear CC say amazing things about you. You need to all experience that. <laughs> Thank you, CC. I'm honest a terrible person. liar. That's what it's about. <laughs> I'm a terrible liar, and you're a wonderful, honest, genuine human being. Oh, believe me, that's an expensive ride, but thank you. <laughs> and Debbie, we love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> Debbie, your work now, is so, so panoramic, and, uh, you know, you have this such a wide open vision, and you take in so much. Uh, and your story was very theatrical and the way you delivered it, I really, really got into that. And all you had to do was mention Albert Hoffman and it kind of explains so much about whatever, you know, everything else you do. So <laughs> thanks for that. I also found your work very lyric, you know, this very forceful uh, emotion that you don't let get out of control, which makes uh, receiving what you have to say um, really um, undistorted. I'm just speechless. So now I have to say, like, I know I just said it about CC, like, so that it doesn't get any better 
I don't know. I already said that. It just got better. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> like, oh my yeah, God. Yeah, it's just really enjoyable to hear you, you know, so much of your work at once. Really great. And that's the fun thing about having these features because you just get it all, you get it all, all at once. Um, I did not anticipate you to reference juggalos at all. Um, that was a fun surprise. Um, growing up here in Manchester, I have seen my fair share of juggalos. Um, amusing people oh, for I the most part. Had, I thought you had a copy of the novella. My friend, you will you will find juggalos within the pages of Edwin in the Embrace of Entropy. That's correct. So thank you for knowing what juggalos is. But I have footnotes in the back for any any square motherfuckers that don't know what a juggalo is. I love the way you said that. And I love the way um you do. And one of the reasons why I have you feature is because it just it just needed to be spotlighted. And I'm just thankful for having this space and having the ability to give you that. And um, once again, everybody. Um, oh, yeah, one more thing. Uh, Miriam messaged me. She wanted to pass on this word. Rock on, Debbie. So glad I could be here to listen, to watch. You were wonderful. And my I could say the same sister, thing. My baby sister. My baby sister came. That's so Thank cool. You, Thank you for coming, Miriam. <laughs> Welcome, we love you too. And with that said, one more time, please give it up for our featured poet tonight, Debbie Segal. Debbie, you know we need oh, we need so a yay awesome. yay. We love you, D. Allen. We need a yay. D. Allen, we need a yay yay. Come on. Maybe he left the room once my amazing feature was done. He's like on the couch fainting or oh. something. Yay yay. <laughs> that's amazing yeah, buddy. that's how you know you did a good job Debbie <laughs> when you get the D Allen yeah, yeah. with that said we're gonna keep the show rolling I posted um the list earlier um like the, the rest of the list on the group chat I'm gonna repost it but anyway with that said on deck is yours truly but stepping up to the plate Leading things off in the second half, please give it up for Marianne Taft. Amita, take it away when you are ready. Thank you so much, Dre. Great to see you, Thomas, and poet friends, and Debbie. Congratulations to you. What a wonderful, wonderful feature. I am absolutely delighted to follow you. Uh, thank you so much for everything. Um, I'm really happy to be here tonight. Monday here in Canada was what we call the National Day of truth and reconciliation. And if you're uncertain what it is we're trying to reconcile here, it's that for 150 years, we sent our First Nations, Métis and Inuit children away to residential schools, some 120,000 of them over that time, and some 30,000 of them never returned. I have a poem of my own, and I'd like to share with you uh, another writer's poem too. If you had asked me, I would have shared with you my land, my ways, even my heart, but you wanted it all. You took my home from me, carrying me far from the hills where I gathered young greens with my mother and sisters. You took my tongue from me that I could not speak with my schoolmates beside me on your hard benches in the words we learned from our fathers. You took my soul from me that I would look at your sorrow-faced man suspended from two crossed sticks and imagine he could save me from this life every Sunday. You wanted it all and we were small. We could not fight, we could only wait and we watched you make mistakes. You should have carpet burned our land when we could not hold up our arms to stop you. You should have starved every one of us when life was even cheaper than it is today. You should have gouged my eyes from my face when even my body was barely my own. Instead, I saw 
The warm sun turned the snowy hair brown. The trees squat silent through the winter and stand to sing out green songs again. Each spring, you should have stripped the memories from my mind that I would forget the voices of my mother and father as they rang out across the frozen bay in the days before you came to empty the gold from our valleys. I will be ever grateful to the spirits who have guided me and my people to this place. From the edge of time, you did not plunge your hands so deeply into my heart that I cannot use to carve wood and stones in the shape of all the ancient stories that tell the world who we are and ever shall be. Thank you, poets. I'd like to share this poem with you from Rita Jo. You muted yourself. Oh, unmute. That. Um, I'd like to share this with you. It's from Rita jo Rita Jo. Uh, she was known as the poet laureate of Micmac Nation. It's called I Lost My Talk. I lost my talk, the talk you took away when I was a little girl at Shubenacadie School. You snatched it away. I speak like you. I think like you. I create like you, the scrambled ballad about my word. Two ways I talk, both ways I say your way is more powerful. So gently, I offer my hand and ask, let me find my talk so I can teach you about me. Thank you, everyone. Everybody at this time, please give it up for Mary Ann Tess. Thank you for this piece. Mary Debbie Ann. said it best. You're, you're, you're a one and only you. <laughs> that was beautiful, Mary Ann. I love that was really that. good work. Wow. Really good. And so important. Yeah, important work, too. You know, whatever happened to we were wrong, the power to say that when we're wrong. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for listening. I appreciate it a lot. It's very, it's very important here in uh, in Canada, and uh, I'm was very pleased to be uh, part of the truth telling with my class of nine, ten, and eleven year olds on Monday, and part of the reconciliation in my little way. Thank you very much for listening. Right on. Um, very important work that you do, most definitely, and it was a pleasure hearing it on Monday, and definitely a pleasure hearing it again. Uh, please keep doing what you're doing, Marianne. One more time, give it up for Marianne Tepp. Woo! Yeah. Ooh. Marianne. We got, we got such a stacked rest of the show ahead of us. It's just, This is so fun to see. And again, I just want to take this time to thank all y'all for taking the time to join us here in Open Minds tonight or today, depending where you are. With that said, on deck, we got C, CR Chagra. Let's step it up to the plate now. It's a me, your host of tonight's action. Please give it up. Give it me. up for Dre Reyes. Uh, I say, turtlenecks are kind of cool. Um... I guess Dwayne the Rock Johnson had a sense of fashion back then. Anyway, let's get on with the poetry. I have two pieces here. One I randomly wrote one day, um, I want to say in May or June, but I think I read it once or twice, but I'm going to read it again. Um, don't know what to call it, so I'm just going to throw into it. I bury myself alive by the unbearable weight, living in false hoods and false ghettos, crying alone in honest falsetto, getting slaps with more goodbyes and hellos, had the stage replaced by gallows, miss uh, gaslighting my soul's manifesto, as St. Anger's grip draws my breath more narrow, pleading to heaven's reflection to answer my questions, who am I and why am I in this situation? Today I look into the reflection with full confidence after meditation, proper coping strategies, and maintenance that I have set in motion. The beginning of a one-man revolution, the Emancipation Proclamation for myself, that is the ignition 
for the gears and pistons to begin transmission. I'm on the mission to for redefinition and redemption. I'm on a mission that will not, excuse me, I'm, I am on a mission that will not fail in. Anyone who dares to be op opposition of my self-betterments will be wishing they, they were more focused on their own disposition than wasting energy throwing, trying to throw off my position, steering me off course from my preferred destination. I broke the rear mirror off because it's useless to, <clears throat> excuse me, I broke the rear mirror off because it's useless when you're looking forward. I have marinated in the juices of judgment long enough and long before enough was enough. It's a time for a change arrived at my door in the form of an eviction notice for all low energy squatting on the floors of my mind, covered in mossy scores of pores that spore a defense mechanism that is finally telling y'all, no, no, no more. Inventory has been performed. Now it's time to show y'all what's in store. Poem. So there's that piece. That only drove away two people. <laughs> How many people am I going to drive away this time? Now I'm going to delve into the voice of Billy Mays for Smoky Puffs. As your breakfast had become quite a bore, good news because fret no more. Hi, Billy Mays here with Smoky Puffs. America, it's time to wake and bake with Smoky Puffs, the hot new cereal with everyone's favorite wildfire prevention mascot, Smokey the Bear. Yes, kids, Smoky Puffs. Kid tested, DEA approved. Kids nationwide are raving and caving in for their cravings for Smoky Puffs. 100% organic, 100% safe to consume, 100% legal, and only 420 calories per bowl to keep you cruising through the bruising of everyday life. Obtain higher education like never before because you'll be baked like a cake but getting better scores on your quizzes and tests forevermore. And kids, remind your parents that they too can enjoy Smoky Puffs. It's the perfect midday treat to help you power through another work week and can be a part of the next hiking trail mix for your cannabis fix. Only you can prevent forest fire, excuse me, only you can prevent forest fires and smoky puffs will help. So put the bowl down and grab yourself a bowl of smoky puffs today. Uh um there's that. Da, 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 da. Everybody unmute yourselves and give it up for Dre Reyes. Yeah. That last piece, Dre, you, you're like channeling Groucho Marx. Hey. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. I take that as a compliment. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So there's that experience. Thank you for allowing me to be stupid with y'all. With that said, we got an awesome rest of the show to go on. With that said, on deck, we got D. Allen, but stepping up to the plate now, please give it up for C. C. R. Chagra. Unmute and take it away when you are ready. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, great work tonight. Good to see a lot of women here, too. Uh, so you, uh, I'm going to go and read something from that's not mine and then i'll do a poem from my book which i hardly ever do this is a lyric that you'll recognize with some added verses that i haven't heard it was written a few years after i was born <laughs> where have all the flowers gone long time passing where have all the flowers gone long time ago where have all the flowers gone the girls have picked them, everyone. Oh, when will you ever learn? Oh, when will you ever learn? Where have all the young girls gone? Long time passing. Where have all the young girls gone? Long time ago. Where have all the young girls gone? They've taken husbands, everyone. Oh, when will they ever learn? When will they ever learn? 
Where have all the young man, men gone? Long time past. Where have all the young men gone? Long time ago. Where have all the young men gone? They're all in uniform. Oh, when will they ever learn? Oh, when will they ever learn? Where have all the soldiers gone? Long time passing. Where have all the soldiers gone? Long time ago. Where have all the soldiers gone? They've gone to graveyards, everyone. Oh, when will they ever learn? Oh, when will they ever learn? Where have all the graveyards gone? Long time past. Where have all the graveyards gone? Long time ago. Where have all the graveyards gone? They're covered with flowers, everyone. Oh, when will they ever learn? When will they ever learn? Where have all the flowers gone? Long time passing. Where have all the flowers gone long time ago? Where have all the flowers gone? Young girls pick them, everyone. When will they ever learn? When will they ever learn? Let's throw back to 1961. That's like a couple decades back, eh? This is from my book. This is called Whisper, which I hardly ever read. Uh, from enough. This was written in uh, 96, I think, or before that. The book was published, the original was published in 96. The book came out again just a little while ago. Three Sounds chapters. About when I wrote that inspiration poem, 96. Whisper the poet riveted the silence. The drama of her soft, bitter, sweet secret pulls you underneath thought's seed and gently shakes your dreams awake. Oh, she'd never read beneath the levels of your sleeping ears to guide you closer to your fears, give your tears the room to fall true. She'd reach the place that is safe inside you and glide you toward your next breath's rest where away you shed the face of stress to discover what connects you to your soul's gift. She'd tap the doubts you carry daily, enlighten you to be yourself with no religion, God or icon, no hero, heroine, guardian or drug. She'd tickle your pain when your vengeance wants to harden and spare you from becoming exactly what you hate. She'd walk your soul to its quiet threshold, but she cannot take for you this last step. She may vibrate in your presence, lighten your mirror, but to see who you are is still your own choice. She's not a wish or fantasy, for she resides alive and she does not invade your soul's body or free will. She's here in your mind, for you let her be there where you, where you can never know how to hold her. If you think to possess her, she will fly away leaving you to prey on your own self. The difference Utter honesty. Within now is a listening key. She here will place one thought on your mind. The smallest lie is the loudest measure. <laughs> she whispered this, laughing with you on one face. You alone only know. You alone know what deceives yourself from any other. For she is not a muse you exhaust for power. She will play no role in the game of your ego. Away, her wind lift, lifting you clear through senses of awe and all uncertain spirits, moving you round, still in flesh, Floating wonder, she drifts away 
motionless, leaving you breathless. That's for you, dear women and Debbie. <laughs> That's the... Uh, from What Manner of Character, the third book in the series from way back, republished and yada yada, nice little quotes on the back, and thank you very much. Love you all. Thank you very Ooh, much, CC. Everybody at this time, please give it up for the one and only CC. Pete Seeger. Yes, Seeger. Oh, by the way, the last line was written by another guy at the end of it. He, he added uh, the last the verse. Joe Hickerson wrote the ending line a year later. <laughs> the, the closing verses, I think. <laughs> so he had to do that. And there's no such I thing know. as a, a past beat, you know, the, the whole beat thing. It's like, it's an eternal thing. We're always evolving. That's what the whole national beat. It wasn't beat just that one beat. It's the beat continues. No, it, it, look it, at, it, look at Dre it, over here. The beat continues. He got the turn. Yeah, but it, it's, an, it's, goes an on. it's an evolution. It's an evolution of, of we will not be silenced. Yeah. Yes. And, and, th and, yes. This, and this, this is the beautiful, ugly you know, truth about us, where we are, what we went through and how, you know, we stood up to our parents and said, this is fucked. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, I mean, there's only, you know, the 2.2 kids and buy them a box of Kellogg's cornflakes. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I just bomb. did. I just did what I wanted to do and uh, uh, hoped they didn't notice. But uh <laughs> <laughs> Turns out when they did, they would just be indulgent and say, that's cool. Well, I, I was, I was, the, the interesting thing about my age is that I was like, I used to, I describe it as, I was, because most people now with Nickelodeon have seen Leave it to Beaver. Back then, you didn't really get the retro of the way they, the generation in the 70s did with Nickelodeon. They got to see five generations of sitcoms. That wasn't true for us with three stations. And, and a phone ringing on the wall and you, you picked it up and your neighbor shared a line because there weren't enough telephone lines. <laughs> you have no idea the difference between then and now is so trippy. Man, it was I was I was Beaver's age, but the 60s was Wally's age. So I got <laughs> to see that. And when everybody started, you know, she loves you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was a little kid who went around. Why do you like that song? It's like, I don't know. Because <laughs> they were just swept up. And that you could feel, you know, that was part of the British invasion is that, 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 uh, what they call that whole thing is that from my perspective and my, where I grew up, it was like, you were allowed to feel, you were allowed to love, you were allowed to be touched. You, it wasn't as like, you know, you're evil. If you don't get married by the time you're 27, you're a spinster. It was not the generation where they're in tight, man, I'm telling you. So, and then video games, the, the fact that you, the kids that you guys that grew up with video games and not playing and jumping out of trees and falling in lakes. I don't know, man. It's like, <laughs> I don't know, man, but, uh, you know. I know, man. Do you guys even steal cars? Like, what the hell? What kind of <laughs> right. Do you do vandalism? <laughs> do you just like go out at night and want to fuck some things up for fun? Right. Like, what is the youth up to nowadays? What are you doing? Do, at do, they, do they at least do they, in the country towns? Do they still do cow tipping at least? <laughs> yeah, please tell me there's a cow somewhere uh, being tipped by an adolescent. <laughs> anyway, all right, move, move it on. Thank you. Let's keep this. Let's keep this thing. Rolling. Thanks, Cc. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, so you that, Cc. Man. Hey, it has been a minute. Out. We love you, brother. It's good to see you, man. It's a good minute. Oh. Thank you, CC, for that. And yay, tipping cows? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, I love the conversations that happen here. I love this community. That said, we got um three more poets lined up for tonight's action, unless people decide to frolic in. With that said, on deck, we got China Bloodmire. But stepping up to the plate now, please give it for Black Silver 47. A mute and take it away when you are ready. Hello. 
Hello, hello. Can you hear me okay? Okay, I see some thumbs up, so I'm going to go ahead and get it right into it. Uh, I got two poems. Uh, the first piece is called Summoning the Reaper, and the second piece will be called Damn. And um, I'm going to have to use the share screen feature to uh, share with you Damn because it's a recording that I did with uh, accompaniment of uh, some music in the background. So um, if you'll enable that, that would be appreciated. But um, starting out, let's start out with the first piece called Summoning the Reaper. All right, here we go. Hi, my name is Alice and the rabbit hole just got deeper, but only for the believers reached into the ether and brought fire back from the first dimension and summoned the reaper. So scary. Some may laugh and some may cry. Some may live and others forgotten in time. This is a bad sign. Yield to the dark omen. Psycho pump pumping out justice. What's the difference? of right and wrong. Here come the reaper singing that same haunting song. He was behind your left shoulder all along. 13 black cats, 666 black crows. I hope I live to be 100 years old. Truth be told, I like to smoke, but the grim reaper cannot be bought or sold. Only God knows. Still, I wonder why. Why do we have to die? And so that was Summoning the Reaper. And so uh, moving on to the second piece, let's see here, share screen, uh, share sound, share. Okay, so this is kind of like um, one of my first little projects that I did on this um, free app that I, that, um, on this free app, uh, Band Lab. So you can find my music on this free app. Uh, the album's called Fairy Triangle. And it's just like, like it says, an acoustic ambient meditative journey. And I'm gonna play you a track from there. This is called Damn. All right, here we go. I got no audio here. You're at 17, 18 seconds. Yeah, I yeah. I don't think you clicked uh, here. Stop the share and then uh, make sure you check the share with sound. Put it back to the beginning of the track, too. Yeah. When you hit share, like uh, it should be on the right hand side there. Reset the timeline. Burn cigarettes. Can you hear it now? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I see thumbs up, so I'm going to go ahead and let it play. Just a man with fire in his heart looking for something to burn. Burn cigarettes, burn time, burn money, it's not enough. I want something true. What I really want is to burn the system down and go back to a time where things were simple. Cause it hasn't gotten easier. Things have only gotten worse. 
with its damn inflation and its damn taxes and its damn clever AI putting you on hold for three hours. But what's there to do about it? People like you and me have no say in the matter. Not really. This fire that's in me burns in every ancestor. It's my portal to a higher power. It's not pretty or cute. It's a flame of wrath and indignation. And it burns and it burns till there's nothing left. And when the flame gets too bright, I put on some music and try to forget. But we all get reminded soon enough. So I'll keep burning till I'm satisfied. I'll keep burning till what's right is right. Could you hear it okay? Yeah, yo, post a band lab link too in the chat. Post that in the oh, chat yeah. so we can all check out the rest of the tracks. Cause he threw up like a whole album. Like we, we showed him band lab and like a week later he's got an album recorded and put up on there. Like so yeah, I think everyone needs to get band lab because we can collab so easy on there. You can fork off people's stuff. It's great, man. That was a wonderful piece, man. Yeah. Everybody unmute and please give it up for Black Silver 47 at this time. And keep asking that hard so question. Good. Wow. At the end of the first one. Keep asking that hard question. If you, if you ask it every day for the next 20 years, you're going to get some serious answers. <laughs> yeah, you, just from this. You, you might even line. flip, you might even flip that question in 10, 20 years. <laughs> this is the setup line. I'm a man with fire in my heart looking for something to burn. That I was on my way after that. You had me. Hello. <laughs> I love what you're doing with music too, Black Silver. Well, that track was so like eerie and haunting, and just like it played to it so well. Like it was just yeah, beautiful piece. Man. And it was a great guitar choice too, because it had that like gate mouth brown kind of really, you know, back porch southern blues kind of early. Uh, acoustic feel, you know, the strings are all steel and, you know, the action between the strings and the neck is like about, you could drive a truck under it, <laughs> but the guitar worked, you know, it had that sound, you know, it was a good choice of guitar. Yeah, so CC is, make, I like the point you're making because I'm, I want to make a kind of a little distinction, but plenty of people are free to disagree with me because it's a, uh, uh, not that easy to do your poem with music if you really want the poem to be the thing that stands out. And it's kind of when you can do like, um, you know, a beat and groove thing or a kind of bed of sound that you work over with your voice. Um, and, you know, if you want to be a pop star, then, you know, go for the pop star thing. But, you know, if you really want your poem to stand out and allow people to um, kind of get uh, reflective about it, that's the best way to do it, in, in, in my opinion. Like that, it's still stuck in my head, man. Never sacrifice your art for entertainment. Never. wonderfully said everybody and again just keep doing what you're doing you're on the right path here dude thank, one you. More time, thank you everybody one more time give it up for black silver 47 yep, yep. right on we got two more poets lined up for tonight Ooh, heavy hitters in their own ways on deck we got frog corpse but stepping up to the plate now, please give it up for China Bloodmire. Unmute and take it away when you are ready. Good 
Just uh, want to take this time to check in with China. Are you with us? Hmm. We can move on a frog and then uh, see if China gets back. We can wait a moment. Let me check in with Frog. Are you ready? Yeah, I can get something real quick. All right. With that said, at this time, please give it up for Frog Corpse at this time. Take it away when you are ready. This is called Wilted Hedge. It'll be an anathema on Dogwood. I called out near the wilted hedges. I wanted that love where it made sunsets fall into stars. That love where I knew Venus when I battled as Mars. Now, I don't want anything. Each flesh I see disgusts me. Each place bores me. Each breath is wasted. Each existence is a run-on sentence repeating monotony, pushing a pin while walking into that space where life is diluted by material property. So if suicide is the answer, what's stopping me? Hope. A running drain of bullshit. Clamoring the pitter-patter of sewer thoughts, triggering septic shock from a past and a mind moving unchained, but still a slave to the days washed. I wanted a love, a love that constructed a home inside myself, though what it built was a wall of cinder blocks, a moat around my burning building with nothing else as you watched ignoring feelings i felt the philo your phobic ego conflated to the point of being institutionalized using madness to rationalize clinging to sanity your emotional dependence individualized by your isolation walking away assuming independence ill communication naive but why in this pit do I sit in this shit and think, why me? You may not understand where these words are coming from, but that's okay because you're not me. That's the irony. Somewhere in the woods, missing what was once good, wasting our lives at the expense of our bullshit, projecting those mental images on silver screens. Racing through the hours on a treadmill, trying to burn off a thought on what was once lost, yet carrying the weight on the low end. Yet most of us pretend that it's our part of a daily exercise, while marching with the fad of our demons yet exercise. So what do we force feed? Anemic by old words once ingested, now starving ourselves from the next confession? Anorexically speaking, of course bulimically eating our pulse in this next one it's called on primrose hill i wrote this for an ex-girlfriend since she was a fan of since she was a fan of uh sylvia plath's bitch ass there's nothing more for me to say, nothing more for me to do. Should I ever sleep in peace? Must I find it in the absent you? Turning colors into grayer shades, tarnishes a well-worn blighted blue. O oh, lady of the silver lake, your void doth rouse my gloom. Bergamot scents bare broken bones, and its marrow lies uncouth. A dream hath sting from memories, chaotically contested with the greatest news. I choose to become a ghost, rather than dream another thought with life on you. 
Should one pine for plath, then I must be craps. Her pithless oven never held room for two. One more. Ooh, okay. Guess it's this one. Getting it to come up. <clears throat> Road that burns at both ends. No more hauntings. These ghosts have gone. They've passed away a long, long time ago. Through tree and sky on a lonesome road that autumn once washed in a thin orange glow. Pushing pin, alarming scent, raging wood engulfed by statement. Silent hill, its sulfur calling for running ink as a filling parchment. Creatures quenched from words starving, a monster maker by the sentence jotting, a writer seeking misery's army, fowls and rope, unearthing company of deadfall fellows, of stalk and straw fiend, of sounding cicada, of lunacy marching, as mindful thinking dawns thoughtless walking, a harvest moon shines back down on the numbing. The thought is worth saving, make a raft for the quandary, as the end of today seems if a month Monday is nothing. Thank you. Everybody at this time, please give it up for Frog Corpse. Rip it, rip it. <laughs> Frog. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, the, the, the mood is is the mood is this. very thick. It's 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 not a lot of people that that uh, when you unearth a poet like like Plath and then so many women, you know, love 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 Sylvia Plath's work and and to be critical of that and pull it out like that, you know, sometimes you got to do that, you know, like uh, you know, I got. I, I, I think somewhere I have a fuck Andy Warhol poem. He sucks. <laughs> yeah, you know, because because confession because <laughs> confe out of all the poets that women write about, one of the one of the things that I learned, and this is a, this is a heartbreaking thing. I'm going to say it's not a, not an insult to Plath, is that what she did is she uh, made a confessional poetry a, a, a genre and a popular thing to emulate. When really confessional poetry is it could save your life, but everyone needs to have their own thing. I once wrote this piece, Beware the Muse Junkie, because you can get addicted to the muse, you know? And uh that's why that last one I did, she's not a muse you exhaust for pleasure. She played no yeah. role in the game of your ego. So I mean it's a similar thing to be critical of any poet that other poets like and kind of immortalize and then try to emulate. But at the same time, you know, be your be your own blood flow. You know, you, you got to die your own death and write that down. You know, you can get too addicted to the inspiration. The inspiration Definitely. can get your pen. Well, in the speaking hand. about getting addicted to muses, we have a show coming in January called The Muse I See. And it's going to be a collaboration with music and poetry. So stay tuned for that. China, are, are you available yet? China! China, that we want so poetry. China! I have a question. Frog, is that last one coming out in, uh, uh, what the what the heck is that word? And Dogwood? Or was, what was happening with that last poem you read? Anathema and Dogwood. Yeah, Wilted Hedges will be coming out. It's um, based on the X, too. Yeah, so, wait, Wilted uh, Hedges was the first thing you read, but like, what was like the third thing you read? Um, let me see. Oh, the uh, a road that burns at both ends. Yeah, that that'll be in there too. Oh, okay, uh, cool. It'll be like 117. But yeah, um, yeah, the ex was into Sylvia Plath a lot, and a lot of other women I've met all, all throughout my life had always been into Sylvia Plath, but not really into Sylvia Plath, if that makes sense. They like to venerate her sorrow as one of their own and take it as their own as this mirroring bullshit 
and it's cliche as fuck and i think it's a weakness and at the same time i'm like yeah if you want to die so bad go and fucking do it stop wasting time but to remind you that her oven only held room for one so if you think you have room with her in there you're fucking shit out of luck and very naive because that death was her decision at her cost and yours will be yours too so you're not going to be meeting at the same fucking place as your inspirations you're going to go when you're going to go so don't herald that as your fucking calling card so yeah that's pretty so good that, miles <laughs> yeah, yeah I hear what you're saying you know it's uh it's it's difficult to accommodate somebody when like you're talking about they they have a a, a sincerity in what they're doing um but the purpose is you know uh, gratuitous it's 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 not a criticism it's it's when you when you're when you're young, you look for inspiration and you look for something and you emulate with it and you resonate with it. But to attach yourself to it and try and copy it, it's like, you know, I want to be the next Bob Dylan. I want to be the next Bob Hope. I want to be the next, you know, whatever it is. You know, I want to be the next Marilyn Monroe. I want to be the next, you know, you're not. You're not going to be your twin brother. You're not going to be your twin sister. Not even if you're identical twins. You, you're going to you're going to be your own soul journey. And and it's but at the same time that first inspiration could pull you out of a, of a life that was planted upon you, and you're trying to break that shell and and be the one that you choose. You know your your soul self that's underneath that programming of where you are, when you are, what circumstances and environment you're born into, and culture and time and and you know the whole thing, faith, you know whatever it is. But uh, I'm so glad that she did bring in confessional poetry. I'm sure um, everyone in this room is is happy that confessional poetry is a genre now. Yeah, but na yeah. name name the most fa famous confessional poets that are women since her. Uh, Diane De Prima, like name them all. Yeah, but there, <laughs> I'm, I'm saying out have... of the, out of the millions that emulated her, oh. in, in the archives of of famous poets. It's a, it's a, there's not a lot of room in the top of that pyramid. Right. No, I'm just saying I'm happy that confessional poetry decided to become a thing and it saves lives. Genre. Well, I think, I think going back to what Frog's point is, it's, and this is what I get curious about is who taught other people that it was pleasurable to suffer. It, it's, it's, it's a, it's, it's a difficult thing because I mean, be care. I used to say when I was young, be very careful how you take someone's God away. Because you know, if it's saving their lives and and, and if that's the ride they want to go, I mean, Frog, you put it very graphically, but you know, it's like that scene in Lean on Me where the teacher takes that kid to the top of the building and says, "You want to kill yourself?" He just was a little. The, he was trying to emulate the gangs in town and. It, and he was supposed to save that school. I don't know if you know Lean On Me. I love that film. Um, lean on me. Hey, speaking of leaning on people, China, I want to lean on you right now <laughs> and get some poetry. What's that? You. Are you back yet? Are you back? China I, Bloodmire? China Bloodmire. You're in the Ms. building? Bloodmire, are you in the building? Go for blood. Go for blood. Go for Two blood. Two eyes to see you better. Come Let on. See you Let's better. go. Bloodmire like a vampire. This oh well, so suspenseful. All right. Maybe she fell asleep or in the other room or whatever. I was just listening. No, that was her deep performance art. I will go we'll wrap up. Oh, the oh yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but much, you know, you know. But as far as the whole confessional poetry thing, it it say, it poetry saves lives, and that one that is a vehicle. And then and then there's being be us being critical of each other and ourselves is also important. That's that's my little kumbaya on the whole thing. <laughs> my little my little kumbaya is gonna be like, thank you so much. If I didn't say thank you enough, like I'm just so honored and moved and happy to have been uh, featured here. Like, and you people are so important to me. All of, all of the people in this room are part of like my whole trajectory, my whole hippie punk post beat grandma 
Grandma Debbie trajectory. So you're all like, we're intermingled. We're all like our DNAs are intertwining in some kind of poetry way. So thank when's, you. When, when's Mama going to read one? Come on, Mama Dawes Mama. there. Oh, you missed it. She's yeah, already read like two or oh, three you of read? them. I think she's brought. Yeah, oh, yeah. I've she's had a couple. Yeah. Yeah. You'll have to go back I'm and look. To. You have to go back oh. and find her. I'm working on one right now, so I'm doing good. I'm just. Oh, mostly... good. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna turn my mom into a poet. Man. She's she's there. She's already got a couple. Of... Before we um wrap up the show, I just want to formally, you know, do the last call for China Bloodmire going once, go for going blood. twice, go for blood. And I guess that's unfortunate. We, we you, don't get to China. hear from blood. We wanted yeah, you. we wanted you. Where were you? Well. China we'll find back. out. It'll be after hours, but hopefully, and but YouTube, you won't be able to see it. Bye. <laughs> but with that, I, I, said, she, she, I love you she, all. I'm glad, I'm glad I did not miss. I'm so happy I saw the flyer and Debbie's name, and it's like I got so much shit to do. I said, "Well, that fuck that. I got to listen to Debbie." <laughs> so thank you. In speaking, in, in speaking of flyers, I just posted the flyer for next week's Open Minds Open Mic show. And we're going to be featuring Jackson Riley. Ah. Yeah. We're going to be hearing a nice half hour set from our young up and comer who's co host of Come As You Are, the workshop open mic that's on every Thursday here in this very Zoom room at 6 p.m., co hosted ah. with C. Santos. And um, it's going to be a treat, definitely. Um, so with that said, stay tuned to whatever um, new shows we got coming up on Instagram through Open Minds Open Mic or through the Slam Jam um, Instagram. So with that said, and speaking of Slam Jam, next time we'll be gathering here in the Zoom room will be tomorrow at the Slam Jam. And we're going to be having Zachary Kluckman, um, awesome poet from the New Mexico area. He's going to be hammering down, sharing some poetry and sharing perspective because we're also going to be here workshopping each other's slam poetry. So stay tuned for that. Until next time, everybody, please keep writing and please keep loving. Peace and love to y'all and have a great night. Bye.